Okay, I'm pretty sure my air conditioning compressor is bad. I'm spinning the inner part of the clutch pulley assembly. And that spins like really easy, like whoopity-doo, she moves. I really don't think that's right. I think there's a busted shaft in there or something. I don't believe I am compressing refrigerant by doing this. Something's not right in that compressor. I'll order a new one. So I got a new compressor, I got a new orifice tube, and a new accumulator. We're starting off with a system that has zero, has no pressure in it. It is empty. So I'm going to need to pull, pull back the fan shroud. It's kind of a rubbery shroud. I'm going to take out one nut. It's a half inch or 13, whatever you want to call it. And then I'll put a block in there to where I can reach up inside there and work the the belt tensioner, relief tension on the belt. And then I will take the belt off of the compressor pulley. All right. Use a half inch drive on a breaker bar to remove the belt off of the air conditioning compressor. From a 10 millimeter with the cheater and that 10 millimeter bolt holds the two lines on the back of the compressor. And might as well knock them loose while the compressor is being held in place by its mount. The little line manifold just pops back, pops off. Just let it hang there. You need to undo the connection for the clutch. Just slide the little orange tab over whichever way it needs and the line's off. Got four bolts holding the compressor on. And they're being held on with 13 millimeters. So if I say it's held on with a 13, or if it's a 13 millimeter bolt, I'm referring to the size of the hex on the bolt. Whole nother story on properly identifying bolts. Okay. Got that upper one loose. There's two uppers and two lowers. Still not there. Compressor for all practical purposes. It is out. I'm not going to install the new compressor quite yet because I am going to take everything off that needs to come off and then flush what lines are remaining to get any oil residue or any other crap out of there. Had air conditioning problems while traveling and bought one of those cans with the gauges already on it. And I don't think it's just 134A in that can. I don't like using stop leak. You got a leak, find the leak and fix it. At least that's my opinion. So I gotta take the orifice tube out and take the accumulator out. Accumulator sits down in here. This is the accumulator. When you take these little clips off, these keep the lines from accidentally coming apart. Kind of flip the little deals, one on each side back. And they come off. Now I need to take a tool and I shut the tool down in here and then release the two lines from each other. If that's the case, it'll be the orange one. There you go. It took some fighting, but it came off. And I believe the inside ones will come off as soon as I take the bolts that hold the accumulator to the body. Two 10 millimeter bolts hold the accumulator to the body. One of my I believe my battery's got to come out to get to my orifice tube. 
So I'll say I believe. Do I know? No, but I'm pretty certain. Why am I certain? Well, <clears throat> the accumulator that I just took out, that big silver aluminum thing, it is on the low pressure side of the system. The refrigerant leaves the compressor and goes through the condenser, which is in front of the engine. And it cools that hot refrigerant, the hot gas, it cools the hot gas. So by the time it leaves the condenser, it leaves as a, not a high, it, it enters the condenser as a high pressure gas. It leaves the condenser as a high pressure liquid. In the old system, it'd go through a receiver dryer before it went into the evaporator. And the receiver dryer filtered it, it had a desk in there to remove moisture, and it allowed excess refrigerant, liquid refrigerant or excess oil from the system to remain in there. Now, as soon as it left the receiver dryer, and right before it goes into the evaporator, which is the box inside underneath your dash that the fan blows air across, it's right before it enters the evaporator, that box, there is a expansion valve, some sort of orifice that takes that high pressure liquid and it all can't go through there at the same time, so it's a smaller hole and that creates it actually creates the pressure from the compressor all the way around to that orifice because the orifice is restricting the flow. So as soon as that high pressure liquid passes through the orifice, it becomes a low pressure liquid as it enters the evaporator. And as it travels through the evaporator, the fan is blowing warm air from inside your cab across that evaporator. So when it leaves the evaporator, it has gotten warm and it has turned into a low pressure gas. And it's warmer because it's draw, it drew the heat out of your cab. It's not, don't think of it as it blowing cold air into your cab, it's pulling the heat out, which you, hot air minus the heat is cold air. And then it travels as a low pressure gas back to the compressor where it gets compressed again. And the compressor, just think of it as a pump moving the fluid. It's not creating the pressure. The, the um, expansion valve is creating the pressure. Now that's the old system, okay? That's not this system, but that's basic air conditioning. So what they've done different these days is there's an orifice tube and inside the high pressure liquid line going from the condenser to the evaporator, there's a, an orifice that restricts the flow, just like the expansion valve did. And on one side of it, it's a high pressure liquid, on the other side, it's a low pressure liquid. And then it does not have a receiver dryer in that system. In this system, it does not have a receiver dryer. It enters the evaporator as a low pressure liquid same way as it enters the old style, it exits the evaporator as a low pressure gas, but not really. There is some in this particular system in the, the one using the orifice tube, it doesn't necessarily get it to cool it so much or heat it up so much that it turns into a gas. So it exits the evaporator still partially in a liquid state. And that's where the accumulator comes in. It kind of does a job as a receiver dryer, but it's on the low pressure side instead of the high pressure side. And it allows for that liquid to remain trapped in there because you don't want the liquid to travel through the compressor or could damage the compressor. It needs to travel through as a gas. The refrigerant needs to be back in a gaseous state to go through the compressor. And that's where the accumulator, that's its job and it's on the low pressure side. So it's a long, long way of me telling you that these lines that I took off for the accumulator, I know are low pressure lines because they're hooked to the accumulator. So this little skinny line going in, that's a high pressure line. So I need to follow it back to figure out where 
the orifice tube is so I can take the orifice tube out and replace it with the new one. So I'm taking the battery out because it goes up underneath the battery. I'm going to pull the battery and the battery box out. And, and once I find it and get that orifice tube out of there, then I'm going to blow all the remaining lines, the evaporator and the condenser, I'm going to blow compressed air through there to push out all the crap that's been put in this system that ain't supposed to be in there. So I'm going to pull the battery and pull the battery box. Looks like 13 millimeter on the box. So, and I'll let you know what I find. I'm pulling there, the air filter box out. 10 millimeter holds it here, and then it just pops into rubber grommets down on the edge of the battery box. Battery box are just four 13 millimeters. It's loose in here. There's a relay attached to the side of it, so if I don't have to take it all the way out, I'm not going to. If I had to guess, I'd say that the orifice tube is right in this piece of line between here and wherever it next clip is. Okay, I got the line off that holds the uh, orifice tube. I was hoping I'd get the tube out of the line. I got a replacement tube, but no, it won't come out. So my wife ran to town to get a new line and tube assembly. So in the meantime, I am going to flush the evaporator, condenser, and any other lines. The compressor is off. All right, I used my flush tool and I flushed all the lines on the truck. I flushed the evaporator and the condenser. I blew compressed air through first. Then I filled up my tool with some flush. Then you charge the tool with air and you push that flush through the system. Then after I did that, I blew, comp um, I blew compressed air through until I could not see any more vapor or water or anything escaping from the lines. So I'm ready to go back with the system. I'm currently evacuating the system with my vacuum pump. The gauge is down to 28. 28, 29 preferably is where I want to be. I'm going to hold it at it for, hold it there for like 30 minutes, pulling a vacuum to draw, draw out as much of the moisture as possible. And then I'm going to close off the, the gauges, turn the pump off, and watch my gauges to notice how much of a drop I have in, in in vacuum. Hopefully everything's good and it'll hold it'll hold the vacuum and then I can charge the system up with 134A and hopefully have a good running air conditioning system. While we're waiting for the vacuum pump to do its thing, let's go over a few details. Your typical air conditioning system in an automobile has a low pressure switch. It is usually found closer to where the lines go into the evaporator. But wherever it is, what happens is if your pressure drops in the system, the switch opens, which de-energizes your clutch on your compressor and shuts it off. This is the protective system if it were to lose the refrigerant. Some systems also have a high pressure switch. Both these switches are usually in series with the, the clutch on the compressor. This truck does not have a low pressure switch or a high pressure switch. It has a transducer on the line coming off of the compressor. On the other system with the high and low pressure switches, you can take a coat hanger, or not a coat hanger, but a paper clip, and you can jump, pull the plug off the switch and you can jump the plug and bypass the switches. And that's a way of, is it my switch or is it my, my clutch? The problem with that transducer setup is it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to troubleshoot because you can't just jump the switch. It just makes it a little bit harder to troubleshoot. So like I said, I'm pulling the vacuum down. It's probably down to 29 by now. Uh, yeah, but gone past 28. 
I might take a minute and pull that compressor apart and see if I can find out what's wrong with it. I'm going to split the compressor apart and see what's inside. She's a moving. Might fly apart, who knows? It's coming apart. I gave her some love taps. Tons of parts. These are the pistons. They actually hang on the edge of the swash plate. They got these little half round balls that they kind of rock on. But that baby is wiped out. Still down about 28 or 29 on my vacuum. It's been a while. I'm going to go ahead and hook up a can of 134A. High pressure side's closed. And I'm going to open this up. Now I'm sending refrigerant, the vacuum's sucking the refrigerant out of the can. The can's getting cold quick. Now I got a few minutes. I gotta put my battery in. Watch. And then I'll crank up the truck and I'll start drawing the refrigerant into the system. When the compressor's moving fluid, you'll find a difference between low and high gauges. If it's not moving fluid, you'll read the same pressure. So I'm reading 10 pounds on the low and almost 120 on the high. And the can's cold as can be. It's supposed to take I believe one pound 14 ounces. It's on a tag up front here. Don't got my glasses on, but my wife, I do believe, told me that. You might want to heat your can up, stick it in hot water. If the engine's nice and warm, tuck it on this manifold or somewhere. It'll help get the refrigerant into the system. And my clutch is engaged. Well, I know it is, because I got a differential difference in pressure. Wish I had some hot water, I would heat this up. There you have it. I put refrigerant back in the system. It's blowing cold air. I button the truck up. As far as I'm concerned, I'm done. Wanted to show you the orifice tube. This is one they sent me. And they said it was a couple bucks, so I thought I'd give it a try. But they kind of hinted that it wasn't going to come out of the line. This is the line the tube goes in. It sits right about in here on this tube. These crimps are keeping it from coming out. Some applications, they, it will come out. But it's an entire line. It costs 40 something dollars. I think I could have got it cheaper, but we were in a pinch, so I sent the, my wife to the local auto parts store. So we pretty much, I think, got over the system pretty good. And um, I'd like to thank you for watching my video. Remember, if you love life and learning new things, GoAimless.com. And please share and like and all them good little YouTube things to my videos to make me look good. But thanks for watching. I'll be trying to get you some more videos.